Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for 292 Baby Educational Videos, Support for Parents and Caregivers of Infants. I would like you to know that all of the experts featured in our video series have given freely of their time and all are from the Early Childhood Community of Greater Rochester. On behalf of everyone affiliated with the 292 Baby Project, we wish you the very best of luck with your children. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. We take a weekly theme, and our weekly theme this week, for the whole week, is on immunizations in the first uh, um, six months of your baby's life. And so a lot of information and uh, something that I think many parents can relate to. We're thrilled to have with us today uh, Barb Moranti, who is a pediatric uh, nurse practitioner at the uh, Pediatric HIV Clinic at uh, Golisano Children's Hospital at Strong. And Barb, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad I could be here. Okay. The, um, immunizations I just remember with my kids you know and it was one of those things where I almost thought it was a trust buster you know like I'd bring my kids and I knew that they were going to get right. shots and they were looking daddy how can you let them hurt us with this right. but a hugely important important uh, issue yeah. um, the word immune I think is often confusing to people maybe we could start there like how would you even define the word immune what it would mean immune I would um, say best is defined by saying to protect mm -hmm. and to give protection um, so your immune system protects you against um, different germs that can uh, give you and in cause infections in mm -hmm. your body. Okay. And when, that, um, when I have my own system that's going to protect me, when does that system kick in? Is it, uh, I'm just curious, like, does it kick mm -hmm. in while I'm mm -hmm. still inside my mother forming? Mm -hmm. Well, really, when a baby is inside the mother's um, womb, the mother around 30 weeks gestation will pass antibodies on mm -hmm. to the baby which uh, gives the baby kind of a jump start in the first year of life mm -hmm. to uh, help protect the baby against infections that maybe the mother has had because the mother, any antibodies that the mother has developed will be passed on to the baby mm -hmm. so um, the baby gradually loses those in the first year of life though but they're, they're kind of you know a way to help the baby fight infections in the first year of life. And so the baby the, will develop his own, his or her own antibodies okay. too. Can we back up just a minute when yeah. you say antibodies? Now, I'm, what, what would that mean? Well, antibodies, you have your immune system, which is made up of white blood cells, mm -hmm. and then there's a special chemical called antibodies that also help in conjunction with the white blood cells to fight infections. Okay. When infections invade, is that a good word, to yeah. invade the yeah. body? Um, those white blood cells go to work then, mm -hmm. right? And the, the, and there's the different types. There's a, a lot of different types of white blood cells. Mm -hmm. You know, some are more specific to fight bacteria. Some are more specific for fighting viruses. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on what the infection is, those cells go towards to the source of the infection okay. and start fighting it. And, anti and antibodies, you know, work in conjunction okay. with. So the antibody is an actual chemical that's produced mm -hmm. produced by the body. Mm -hmm. So the child, before they're ever born, they get this blast of antibodies from the mom. Yes. So if she's been sick with something, yes. those antibodies would um, would show up in the baby. Yes. Um, now you work in the HIV clinic, mm -hmm. and you test babies of HIV positive moms. Yes. Is it a problem there? I mean, if the baby has. Yes, actually, um, when you talk about the standard AIDS test or HIV test, mm -hmm. it's an antibody test. So if I were to have an HIV test, they would be not testing for HIV in my blood, but testing for the presence of antibodies mm -hmm. to see if my body has made antibodies to HIV. Mm -hmm. So um, if you test a baby who's been born to a mom with HIV, the baby is going to have the mother's antibodies to HIV. So when you do a standard HIV test on a baby, mm -hmm. it will be positive because there are positive, there are antibodies to HIV in the baby's blood. It doesn't mean there's HIV in the baby's blood. Yeah. And really, only um, about 5% of babies uh, born to moms with HIV get HIV from their mothers. It's a very small amount, mm -hmm. especially if the mothers take um, their medicines to fight the HIV during and, their pregnancy. And they take the medicines during the pregnancy. During the pregnancy. Well, that's got to mm -hmm. be not shocking to you, but uh, it would be a difficult thing to deal with, right? I mean, you got a positive science mm -hmm. suggesting really from the test point, if you went by test alone, yes. it would look like the baby was infected. Yes. 
It's very confusing. It's confusing for parents. It's actually confusing for other, you know, healthcare providers until they've um, been taught and understand yeah. the difference. So really, in our program, we do a special test that <coughs> looks for the virus in the baby's blood. Mm -hmm. And we can tell by the, ba by the time the baby's five months old whether or not the baby has HIV or not. Mm -hmm. Back in the days when I first started this program, um, which was 10 years ago, mm -hmm. they used to have to wait until the baby was about 15 months old or 18 months old, really, to see if they lost the antibodies. They didn't have the special test to look uh, for HIV, mm -hmm. so they had to wait to see if the baby lost the HIV antibodies because, all, like I said before, all babies get the antibodies from their mom and they lose them by the time they're a year and a half. Okay. So So that's why they had to wait for the 18 so months. So they used to have to wait. Yeah. Did they make the assumption that the baby did have HIV? Um, no, so we would look for signs. We used mm -hmm. to look for signs of any other types of infections if they had um, um, chronic maybe ear infections or weight loss or you know mm -hmm. other problems then you'd kind of make the assumption otherwise you just kind of have to wait and hope for the best. Yeah. Actually, though, the HIV uh, question does give us a good way to start and to, to mm -hmm. take, a look at the, mm -hmm. take a look at the antibodies and the test, trying to find the antibodies there. Right. So, okay, so the baby's born there, are washed with the uh, antibodies, mm -hmm. and the antibodies, that's probably part of nature's immune system yeah. for the child, yes, too, right? Yes, exactly. Um, but at one point, the child must begin to develop their own antibodies? Mm -hmm. as, as the baby becomes exposed to different... Um, germs, the mm -hmm. baby will start to develop its own immune system. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. If the child's in daycare, it seems like they develop that immune system even faster. You know, yeah. I know my kids in daycare, they mm -hmm. um, are sick all the time with yeah. colds. Yeah. So their immune system's kicking in really early. I just yeah. read the, a summary of a study in the paper um, that said the kids who are in daycare and who get exposed to those um, germs mm -hmm. that when they're older their immune systems are stronger am i remembering that right well they might have said that i um some I might people not have remembered it right no too, some people say that <clears throat> some people say you know yeah. oh, well then if they're sick during the years that they're in daycare then they're not going to miss school as much when they're they're older but i'm trying to think of my own kids and yeah. and uh, that kind of holds true but yeah um they, the older ones still get sick too this issue of a body of a body's immune system mm -hmm. producing these antibodies. Mm -hmm. Is this at all related? I'm pulling a, just something that just popped into my mm -hmm. mind. When in the early days of this country, back in the 1400s, you mm -hmm. know, shortly after it was discovered, where Europeans would come here, go to an Indian village, mm -hmm. and the Indians would catch something that they didn't, their immune systems weren't prepared for, and actually kill everyone in the whole village. Would it be because they didn't have antibodies to yeah, fight that it's infection? Because it's, yeah, it's a, it's a foreign um, infection, mm -hmm. something that they. Um, they weren't protected. We weren't protected against. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So we got the babies, and um, they're starting to build their own immune system. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk, if we could, about what it is that the um, um, the immune system is protecting against. You know, what is it that we're afraid is going to invade the body? Um, well, there's a lot of different types of germs. To you know, speak basically in mm -hmm. terms of germs, um, you have different types, which are you can have bacteria and viruses, which are the germs we hear mm -hmm. about the most and talk about the most. And there are other types of um, unusual bacteria, mycobacteria, like tuberculosis mm -hmm. is a mycobacteria. Micro usually means very tiny. Actually, myco. It's, oh, myco. It's, yeah, oh, okay. micro means tiny, yeah. right. But myco um, bacteria is just a little... Um, like a category name yeah, or something? Yeah, it's a category, okay. and it's, um, it has different qualities to it. They're slow-growing bacteria okay. that um, they're actually hard to kill. Mm -hmm. um, but it's enough to set it aside into its own, yes, its own yes, category. Yes, yes, And then there are yeasts um, and fungus. Mm -hmm. Different. And they, those are the types of infections, like fungal infections um, are, are really something that somebody with a, a weakened immune system has to worry about mm -hmm. more, than, um, more than others. Okay. Um, the yeast, you, you hear about, you know, athlete's foot is a mm -hmm. yeast oh, type okay. infection. Okay. Okay, so. And they're treated differently? They're the all yeasts? treated differently. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all different medicines for. All right. So we've got regular bacteria and regular viruses. Mm -hmm. and then we've got mycobacteria. Mm -hmm. 
and yeasts and funguses. Mm -hmm. so and it, there's others. Okay. You know, I, but just as a general yes. idea about we got an immune system, what is it trying to protect against? Yes. But probably the most common ones would be the, the virus the and the virus bacteria. The virus and the bacteria, yeah. They're treated differently. They are different, aren't they? They are, they are very different. Um, let's see. Uh, first of all, you have a lot of people that go to the pediatricians with a child with a cold, and they want mm -hmm. um, antibiotics for that cold. Well, most colds that you know we get, kids mm -hmm. get, most colds are caused by viruses. You know, when I say a cold, sneezing, you know, mm -hmm. congestion, mm -hmm. cough, most of those are caused by viruses. Antibiotics don't work against viruses. Okay. Okay. So a parent who wants antibiotics, the doctor's not giving it. Right. P parents get frustrated. They mm -hmm. say, well, they didn't give me any medicine. My baby's sick. Well, mm -hmm. you know, the baby doesn't need it if it's a virus because okay. it won't do anything. And actually, you've probably heard a lot about an um, antibiotic resistance that develops. Yeah. If we misuse antibiotics and just prescribe them for anybody that has a fever or anybody that has an, a stuffy nose, then resistance develops over time. Mm -hmm. um, resistance develops to those antibiotics and they are not effective anymore. Okay. So that would be bad. That's very bad because yeah. we want to have the antibiotics to use when we really need them. Is that something that can happen within an individual child that you get so many uh, it can't, yeah, like, um, or I'm thinking of us as opposed to our culture. Do we yeah, use antibiotics can, too much? It can culture? be both. Um, mm -hmm. Some kids get repeat ear infections, and after a while, you have to start using um, stronger medicines to fight the ear infections. Okay. And that could be just because the germs yeah. from the beginning were the type that really needed a different antibiotic anyway. Okay. Um, so. Ear infections are a good example of what we do treat with antibiotics okay. because they're caused by bacteria. It's a bacteria. Yes. All right. Certain pneumonias. Certain pneumonias are viral. Certain pneumonias are caused by bacteria. Mm -hmm. The ones that are caused by bacteria are the ones that we treat with antibiotics. And how do you know if it's a virus yeah, or a bacteria? Yeah. How do you know? Um, sometimes the way it presents, the way it looks on a chest x-ray, mm -hmm. um, sometimes they'll do a culture to actually tell if it's a bacteria or not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just kind of have to presume maybe it's a bacteria and yeah. treat it with an antibiotic. Okay. Yeah. Basic question for me, just mm -hmm. trying to understand. Is a bacteria and a virus, are they both alive? Yes. Yes, they're all small living, living mm -hmm. organisms, um, but they're so small that you can't see them with your eyes. Right. They're, here on the table, they're on this cup, mm -hmm. they're on your hands, and mm -hmm. that's why you've probably heard um, the expression. I mean, I've heard it a lot because I work in the hospital, but mm -hmm. the single most important way to prevent the spread of infection is by washing your hands. Yeah. So if you want to do anything to help <laughs> prevent the spread yeah. of infection, it's wash your hands. Yeah. I remember our doctor telling us when we brought my son home, my firstborn, um, best you can, get everybody to wash their hands before they handle the baby. Yes. And I can remember asking people, would you mind washing your hands? And they were insulted by it. Yeah. Um, but what I try to do now is if, I, if somebody says you want to handle a baby, I'll say, let me wash my hands first and just kind of so yes. they don't even have to ask me. Yes. You know, so that's a good good advice oh, before. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Or sometimes if I'm not in a position, I'll just grab the toe that's in a, that's in a little footy, you know, so right. I'm not actually making contact right. with them. Because okay. if you did touch their hands, then it would have to somehow... Spread yeah. or break well, it goes actually, in their mouth it's a good example because when I brought, I have an um, eight-month-old. Okay, at right. home and, and you have four kids and too, I have which, four I, kids. which I learned. Yes, so. yes. When I brought my eight-month-old eight home, my three-year-old was sick. Um, he had some um, sort of viral infection, and mm -hmm. I we would say, okay, you can because he'd want to touch the baby. Can mm -hmm. I hold his hand? And I'd say, yeah. no, you you can hold his foot. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. we let him hold his feet. Yeah. So. Um, because he sucks his thumb, and because the three-year-old sucks his thumb, he's you know touching things that get germs on him, and then yeah. he puts it in his his mouth. He gets sick a lot, and then he gets his germs on his hands, sure. and so he touches the baby, and yeah. the baby gets sick. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Parent Talk. I'm Jim Coffey, and our topic of discussion this week is immunizations. In fact, our show today is entitled Department of Defense, and rightfully so. Um, with me today is uh, Barb Moranti, who is a, a pediatric nurse practitioner up at um, Golisano Children's Hospital at Strong. And we are in the middle of talking about just what an immune system is. Barb is telling us that it's a, a way to protect our bodies from invasion by things like 
um, bacteria and um, also viruses. And um, so we just left that off before break. And again, let me encourage you all to call 292-BABY and select option seven. Um, viruses versus bacteria. You mm -hmm. mentioned that there's also molds and funguses mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. mycobacteria and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. But those are the two big ones, aren't mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. And you said that they're both alive, and but they're treated differently, right? You, yes. Um, well, viruses are actually what mainly the um, immunizations that babies get are, are geared at um, helping us, helping babies form antibodies to. Okay. Um, the, the viruses like chicken pox, we used to think, oh, it's, you know, okay, let the kids just get the virus, mm -hmm. the natural disease, and um, just form their own protection against it. But um, we found that if the babies are given uh, the, the immunization, the chicken pox immunization, that they're, um, it's safe, it's, it protects the babies, and um, they think, you know, they're, they're not sure at this point, but they think it provides lifelong protection, and there's actually less likelihood of kids getting, or actually adults, developing shingles mm -hmm. later on. Mm -hmm. I had a, a flu shot this year for the first time. Yes. And when the woman gave me the shot, she said, don't worry, these are dead. Yes, you know, a lot of people think that that they're getting infected they're, with the they're real. They're going to get because people coincidentally will get a cold after they get yeah. a flu shot, mm -hmm. and I mean even coworkers that I work with say, "I'm not getting a flu shot again because <laughs> it gave me the flu." Yeah, and it's a killed virus. Okay, um, it cannot give you the flu. Actually, it's a good point that you made because chickenpox is a live virus vaccine. Oh. Um, it's weakened though, mm -hmm. so it can get, it gives like a very mild case of the disease, and that's mm -hmm. how it helps. You know, you don't get the full disease, yeah. full blown disease, but you get a mild case of chickenpox, and mm -hmm. then you develop antibodies that okay. way. Okay, and so it's just enough to trigger that immune yes. system to to do yes. the antibodies. Okay, yes. we have a caller, so maybe we can okay. take that question and come back to that okay. because. Sure. Uh, um, hello. Hello. Who is this? This is Rachel. Nice to meet you. This is Jim. Thanks for calling Parent Talk. Um, what's your question? I want to know if it's bad when they get a fever. When your baby gets a fever, is that a bad thing? Right. That's a great question. Okay. That's a good question. Um, when your baby gets a fever, that's really a sign that there's something going on, some sort of infection. Um, most of the time, um, when a baby gets a fever, it's, it's a viral infection, but you, you never know. So. The best thing to do is, if your baby has a fever, is to call the pediatrician or nurse practitioner, somebody that you, know, you see in your um, doctor's office or healthcare provider, mm -hmm. and um, have them check the baby. They'll listen to the baby's lungs. They'll look in the baby's ears and make sure that the baby doesn't have an ear infection mm -hmm. or some sort of pneumonia. Is the fever that a, a baby would experience that could be tied to anything, couldn't it? I mean, that's just a common sign mm -hmm. that, that something's mm -hmm. not right. It's a sign that there's some sort of infection. Mm -hmm. Is a fever bad? It's not necessarily bad. Mm -hmm. it, it's your body's um, way of, or it's it's kind of just a, um, what it's your body's response to a foreign particle or foreign infection um, in your in the body. So. Just a quick question. Um, if a baby has a, a fever, a mm -hmm. lot of times you'll hear take Tylenol to reduce the fever. Yes. That's not in any way getting rid of the bacteria or the no, virus. It's no, not. it's not. No, it's not. Why do they want to reduce the, the temperature well, of the body? Well, you know, and some people, some people get very worried about fevers. Mm -hmm. uh, parents get very worried about fevers, and fever's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I would say if your baby has a fever and isn't bothered by the fever, you don't really need to treat it. Mm -hmm. But if your baby has a fever and, you're, and is miserable, mm -hmm. give the baby some Tylenol and that'll help um, with the symptoms and the irritability. Okay. okay? And Does, is there a cutoff for what's a fever that you should worry about? Like 98.6 is normal. What if it's 99.6, one degree? That, yeah, that, I wouldn't really call that a fever. Okay. Over um, like 101. Okay, something over 100 yeah. as a yeah. general rule. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. How was that? That was good, thank you very much. Okay, thanks for calling Parent Talk. Great. Because I always worried about fevers, you know, even a little yeah. bit. It's like, oh, you know, yes, I just, yes. I think, uh, um, probably more with the first child. But mm -hmm. that's typical, you know, mm -hmm. you just kind of, you kind of mm -hmm. worry about so many things. Um, 
Okay, let's go back to the idea of viruses and bacteria. Okay. And um, you say that they're treated differently. You don't treat a virus with antibiotics. Right. Um, there actually are a lot of different uh, medicines that have been developed to treat maybe symptoms of viruses or to help um, maybe the viral infection not last as long. Like mm -hmm. you know, people get cold sores, herpes, herpes yeah. virus. Um, actually chickenpox is a herpes virus mm -hmm. and cold sores are caused by herpes simplex virus. Um, and a lot of people that have cold sores are, are very uncomfortable with them. Mm -hmm. I've never had them, but I know that they're very painful. Mm -hmm. And there have been medicines developed to um, help the viral infection clear up faster. It doesn't mm -hmm. treat it because actually it never goes away. When you have chicken pox, that virus always stays in you. It stays dormant. Mm -hmm. Actually, in your nerves is where it, um, it, it lives. You know, dormant though, I don't asleep. Like I don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> I want it to just yeah. be out. And herpes, yeah. um, that's um, herpes simplex. That is a virus that never leaves. So people will, if they're under stress, they'll um, maybe develop a cold sore, a mm -hmm. like a, a blister, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then it'll it'll heal up, go away. But it doesn't mean it's gone forever. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big difference between bacteria and viruses. When oh, you yeah. have a bacteria in your system that causes an infection, you'll get treated with antibiotics and it'll clear it up and it'll be gone. Okay. So something like a cold is more likely to be virus? Yes. And something like an ear infection more likely to be? Bacterial. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about before washing your hands before you hold a baby. Are there some things that parents can do? That's not actually helping the immune system, but are there things you can yeah, do to help your own immune system? Right. Well, to help, um, what parents can do to actually help their kids' immune systems, or you, know, you and I can do, is um, get plenty of rest. You mm -hmm. know, don't don't stay up too late, and um, don't wake up too early, and eat well, have a well balanced diet, um, exercise, get fresh air. And what parents can do is they can take their kids to, to their health care providers to make sure they get immunized mm -hmm. against these common childhood infections that can be very dangerous if the kids get sick with them. Okay. All right. So really living a very healthy life in general, that's one of the benefits is that it will just mm -hmm. it'll boost the quality of your immune system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it just uh, almost holistic, isn't it, when yes. you think of the, because stress comes in, it can mm -hmm. help break things down, mm -hmm. make, uh, make it uh, right. some of the viruses you said um, they manifest themselves quicker under a stressful situation. Oh, definitely. So yeah. if, if you've got a lifestyle that will help you to deal with the stress, then you help mm -hmm. manage that kind of thing mm -hmm. too. So, okay. Mm -hmm. But as we wrap up here today, um, a major concern for parents, like when do the shots start coming? When do they, you, you talked about the boost of antibodies from mm -hmm. your mom, and then you start building your own antibodies, and mm -hmm. they start protecting you. When do those shots start? When do the babies start getting yeah. the shots? Um, right at their... A uh, two-month visit. Okay. That babies will start two months, four months, six months, mm -hmm. and it's hard. I mean, I I'll have to admit it was hard for me to see my baby get four shots, but yeah. I know that it's important for for the kids too. Yeah. So. Um, two months, you, you know, I, I can remember really beginning to interact with the kids right around then, two mm -hmm. and three months. You know, where yeah. you start, that whole They're relationship smiling. started going. Yeah, yeah, we started interacting, yeah. and that's beyond there is when it hurt most when I had to take them for shots oh, yeah. because they're looking at yes. you like, you've betrayed me, you know, yes. how could you possibly let me have these shots? But probably um, one of the best things you can do. Definitely. Right, with that. So um, sticking with the schedule, very important for, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, pediatricians would probably push that all the time. Yeah, very so. important, very okay. important. Okay, well, I can't thank you enough for joining us today and a thank great you. introduction into that whole field of, uh, of um, immunizations and, mm -hmm. and what it does and uh, um, good instruction for me so I got a better understanding so mm -hmm. thank you. What we'd like to do is bring to you some newborn tips this week and many of these tips are just common advice that you may or may not have heard before but I'd like to start out with one important safety message and that is never shake a baby. You've seen the commercials shaking a baby can be very harmful and we just want to get that message out over and over again so try not to and even if a fit of frustration or even an attempt to soothe your baby, shaking is not what we want to do. Cuddling, holding, rocking, those are all fine. If you find yourself feeling that frustrated, just go ahead and let your baby down. Sleeping patterns. Newborns do sleep a lot. 
and they can sleep up to 18 to 20 hours. So if you find your, your baby just sleeping excessively, as long as he's waking up three to four hours, he's probably fine. If you find your baby skipping a feeding, sleeping straight through to the, the next feeding, that could be a problem. And it's often an early sign of illness if your baby's not waking up at the expected time for a feeding. So if they're going more than six or seven hours in a row without waking to feed, give your doctor a call. Keep your baby smoke free. You've heard the, the difficulties of secondhand smoke. Babies are even more prone to some of those difficulties and they include an increased risk for infection, influenza, respiratory infections, an increased risk of ear infections because that's part of the respiratory tree and also an increased risk of colic. And for fussy babies, some of that exposure to smoke can make them even fussier. So if you can't quit your smoking yourself, at least make the commitment that you're going to smoke outside of the house so that your baby is not getting exposed. The back to sleep campaign, that just means when you put your baby to sleep, put him on his back. Babies will have a much lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome and will be safer with that back sleeping position. And the last one is when you're getting ready to go to your doctor or the next well child visit, go ahead and make a list. Most mothers will tell you that their memory was shot somewhere during delivery and they just can't remember all the things they wanted to bring up at the doctor's visit. Go ahead and make a list. We don't mind you bringing that list in. Or even better yet, give us a call at 292-BABY. That's 292-2229. And we'll help answer some of those general questions so that you can save your specific questions for your doctor when you come in to see him for your visit. And those are your newborn tips for the week. Good morning, sunshine. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Baby's brains don't grow She'll by themselves. But when you sing to your baby, talk to your baby, and play with your baby, his brain cells learn to grow. So sing to your baby, talk to your baby, play with your baby. 292 Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners, and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of 292 Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort.